two beautiful examples on the board and they, are, they look the same but they are very different. In the first example, a ball is launched horizontally with a speed of 2 meters per second from a height of 10 meters above the ground. We are required to calculate the time of flight, the horizontal range, and the speed with which it hits the ground. Now, um, whenever you ask to calculate something in projectile motion, you often want to ask yourself, is this a horizontal motion problem or a vertical motion problem? Now, when you're asked to calculate the time of flight, I would most probably recommend that you use um, the vertical motion because it's way easier that way. Of obviously, a horizontal range is a horizontal distance. The speed at which it hits the ground, this is a little tricky, and I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. Let's start first by looking at the time of flight. But whether you've read the problem or not, whenever you are dealing with a projectile motion problem. This is horizontal projections. They are a set of four equations that you should always write down. From those equations, I can certainly guarantee that you can solve every problem before you. Two for X motion and two for Y motion. So I'm gonna do this. This is X and this is Y. Where x is equal to v naught t, v x is just gonna be equal to v naught t. Here y is equal to h minus one half g t squared, and v y is gonna be equal to negative g t. Obviously, we are assuming that the origin is right there. If we assume that the origin is here, then this expression changes. In that case, it becomes y equal to 1 half g t squared. So, this set of equations will give us everything that we need. So let's tackle the first problem. Let's calculate the time of flight. That is the time from launch to when the ball hits the ground. Notice something. When the ball hits the ground, what happens? The y distance is zero. So we know that if for the time of flight, y is equal to zero, that would mean that h minus one half g t squared is equal to zero. Hence, the time of flight will be equal to the square root of 2h all divided by g, which will be equal to the square root of 2 bracket h is 10 meters divided by g, which I'm going to assume to be 10 meters per square second. So t here, the time of flight is just the square root of 2 seconds. So this is the time of flight. The horizontal range b is an x distance, so it's going to be equal to v naught t, which is equal to v naught is 2 meters per second. T is the square root of 2 seconds. That would mean that the range is equal to 2 root 2 meters. So this gives us our range. Now the next part which is C requires that we calculate the speed with which the ball hits the ground. This is a little tricky because when the ball hits the ground, it has 
an x and a, a y velocity. So the speed with which it hits the ground, v, is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. But what do we know? We know that the velocity in the x direction never changes. So this is just going to be equal to v naught squared plus g squared t squared. So this expression right here gives us the speed at any time t. But when the ball hits the ground, t carries a specific value which is root 2. We know v naught, we know g, so we can calculate the speed with which the ball hits the ground pretty easily. V naught, V naught is 2 meters per second, T is root 2 seconds, and G is 10 meters per square seconds. So you should be able to substitute v naught here, g here, and t here to be able to calculate that speed. I hope you did get the main idea. Let's move on to the next example.